So this is a picture of the folks at, the, at, at Peking University, um, either talking with me or talking with Harvard. Um, one of the kind of really neat uh, demonstrations of a couple of these different thrusts that I've talked about is that you may know that, that Harvard is connected only to Internet 2. It's not connected to NLR. Um, these guys were connected only to NLR. Um, so one of the really first demonstrations of the, the kind of cooperative agreement between NLR and Internet 2 was the ability to bring these guys across the exchange from, from China, from, from Beijing, and Harvard across the Internet 2 to, to NLR connection for the purposes of telepresence. Nobody else sees Harvard's routes except the telepresence exchange. Um, and to be able to enable these guys to talk together as if they were in the same room with each other. Um, the other thing we're trying to do internationally is that, you know, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for the National University of Singapore and the University of Pe Peking University to, to come to Kansas City to talk to each other in, in Asia. Um, but that's the way the signaling, that's the way the media flows. So we're, one of the things we're trying to do is get, is get someone in the Asia region or even Australia to, to form a similar exchange like ours. We're also working with somebody, with folks in Europe, to try and do the same thing in Europe. And the idea is to cre create a federation, an international federation of R&E exchanges that will all talk to each other, that don't need the commercial carriers. We have these great national and international R&E networks that connect us each to each other. Um, we're not worried about bandwidth. We, you know, these are multiple 10 gig connections for the most part. Um, you know, we have wonderful networks that connect us to each other. We're not worried about that part of it. We just need the functions to be there. And we're starting to get some interest in that, and um, we're continuing to work with folks to try and get uh, international connectivity to be better. Um, so I think in a lot of ways, I, I hope, we're leading the commercial carriers in kind of the interoperability of, tele of Cisco telepresence, at least. So we, we talked earlier about the, the whole question of finding out who's there and getting connected to each other. These are sort of some of the questions. You know, I know somebody's there. Well, I don't, maybe I don't know somebody's there, but I want to use telepresence. Uh, I want to talk to them. So finding out who's, who's where and then figuring out how, to, how they're connected, how I'm connected, whether we can talk to each other, how to talk to each other, and then sort of the nitty-gritty details, how to find out their scheduling system. Is the room available? Where is the room? Who can get access to the room? Uh, what do I need to do to schedule the room? What do they need to do to schedule the room? Um, and things like that. Um, so two approaches to that. One of them is a Cisco telepresence directory that I don't have any slides to show you, but uh, we think it's coming along and it's going to provide some, some really powerful options, as, particularly as far as figuring out how to, how to solve those problems of, of reachability and scheduling. Um, but the, another one is, oops, is a directory put together by the folks at North Carolina State University. Um, and it uses Google Maps and allows people to opt in and put their own information as much or as little as they want to. Um, it pops up on the map, they can search it textually and all kinds of other things. Um, you can click on a site or you can click on the information down at the, on the listings. And, you know, this is, the, this is one of the entries for Harvard. But it talks about who the contacts are, talks about where the rooms are. Um, so we think it's something like this is, you know, is a, is a good first step. We're encouraging everyone who uses telepresence to list themselves in there. And I have the URL in here somewhere. Um, one of the other things that's really important is to, is to be able to measure and monitor. We, there's a bunch of kind of scarce resources. Um, we need to know how much they're being used so that we can know how to plan for it. We also need to be able to um, know when we need to expand, expand it to new things. And just to be able to know what the members are doing, what they're, how, how much they're doing with it, and, and to be able to report back to them and, and how it's going. So, so, you know, we're measuring everything we can and trying to find ways to measure better. Um, the graph on the bottom is just sort of how many connections there are inside the network. Um, these are hourly samples. Um, you can't see the scale, but I think the top of the scale is 18. So what we're seeing is, you know, upwards of about 20 connections an hour um, through the exchange on, you know, some of the time. And, um, you know, sort of predictable, you know, pretty quiet at night and, and moderately busy during the day. Um, the connection in the upper, the graph in the upper right is just showing the number of minutes to the AT&T commercial exchange over, over month by month. So um, it's, a gra it's a slope of about 0.75, so it's increasing steadily. Um, we think that there's, you know, there's interest there and, and that's continuing to grow. 
Um, and you know, I think one of the things that we're trying to do is also help the rest of the world set standards. So things about how to, how to express international dialing for telepresence and how to, you know, how, to, how to think about architectures and stuff like that. So those are also, I think, some of the things that we're helping to, to lead and contribute to the rest of the, of the telepresence world who have been thinking about this in kind of a parochial regional sense before and not, um, not, no, not really globally. Um, global challenges, we've talked about a lot of that stuff. I'm really out of time. Um, but uh, we want to talk about what the future is. One of the most important things is interoperability with H323. You know, everybody, all of us in the, in the R&E world have large investments in 323 systems. Um, telepresence is not a 323 signaling system. Uh, we need to be able to get those so that they can talk to each other. They can do it. There are Cisco solutions for that. And that's one of the next things we're looking at for the, for the exchange. Um, we're looking at encryption, we're looking at hardening, um, we're looking at, you know, as part of an architectural question, what belongs in the exchange, what do people really need to do with the edges, and we talked about some of those kind of equipment options earlier. Um, and, you know, if you're interested, uh, you know, what, what do you do next? And these are some of the questions here. Um, talk with us, we'll be glad to help you. Uh, talk with Cisco, talk with your local Cisco folks. Um, and there's some questions. I don't know if we have any time for questions or not. I hope we there's do. There's always we wanna, time for discussion. We want to have discussions. So, you know, we thought that from the questions yesterday, it sounded like there was some interest and some questions and some things you wonder. Um, take a few minutes and, and talk about some of those things.